right? I have no idea who's in who's in either one of those houses, right? I wasn't interested in those houses. I, I'm, I'm sure you had no idea. This video contains the interview of Police Sergeant Jeffrey Pello, who betrayed his family, fellow officers, and the community he was sworn to protect. Jeffrey Pello was a veteran officer of 17 years at the Bloomington Police Department. He was well respected within the department and was known as a loving husband and father to three teenagers. Unknown to everyone, Pello had a darker side lurking under the surface, fueled by his interest in violent pornography. Late one night in June 2006, Janelle Galuska reported someone knocking on her door repeatedly. When an officer got there, he noticed a man close by, and when asked to turn around at gunpoint, he realized that it was Pello, the officer who had been instrumental in mentoring him. Suspicions were raised, and the police took him into custody. Soon, he was also linked to a string of sexual assault cases between 2002 and 2005. Two previous victims came forward with stories about a man breaking into their houses, wearing black clothing and a ski mask. After abusing them, he would force them to bathe thoroughly while he cleaned the crime scene. Three of the four assault survivors identified him from photographs, and two of them even identified his voice. While there was no physical evidence tying him to the crimes, the prosecution used other evidence that pointed to his guilt. His work computer was used to research the victims before the attacks. This isn't the way we want this to happen, right? We want you to come down here and go and all kinds of stuff, and chat and all that kind of stuff. Unfortunately, it didn't happen that way. You know, you worked on this, the same year, uh, the, the board room. And um, as you know, we have rules that we have to go by. Just as, you know, you're very familiar with all this stuff, you know what's going on, all kind of stuff. And we want to talk about what's going on because we're not absolutely sure what's going on okay um, what are you talking about i have to read your rights first right? my arrest at this point uh, you're not free to go at this point you're mm -hmm. under arrest I'm not free to go. I'm under arrest. Well, we're in a custodial situation. That's why I'm going to read you your rights. All right. Because you came, because you came down here in the, their car. I don't know where we're going to go. I don't know where we're going to. I don't know where we're going to go. What's going on? I don't even know what you're talking about. I understand that, Jeff, and you understand just like I do that I can't talk about anything until we get this right. little bit out of the way. Bello is hostile, demanding to know if he is under arrest. As a member of the police force, he knows all of the rules and will do everything he can to use that knowledge to exploit the situation. Distraught, Parker Bell fired a 40 caliber pistol into the floor, sending the room, which included several civilians, into a panic. As people duck for cover. All right, all right. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can or be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to talk to a lawyer and have one present with you while you're in question. If you can afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you before you question if you wish. You can decide any time to exercise these rights, and not answer questions or make any statements. Do you understand the rights I explained to you? Yes, of course I do. Okay. I have those rights in mind you wish to speak with me. About what? Okay. Well, last night, all right. There was a, a, an issue that came up, right? Out on the uh, southwest side of town, right? You know what I'm talking about? There's a, it, it's a, I want to hear what you have to say about it. And I'm, I'm really hoping there is a good explanation for it all. I. Did you meet up with the police officer last night? You're talking about Zeno. Yes. When I was walking around by the lake, looking at the lake down there. Again, I drove down there. I couldn't sleep. All right. Houses come up for sale in that area all the time. I'm interested in buying my mother in law a house. She lives up in Ridley. Uh, she's, you know, she's poor. She's on fixed income. I wanted to move closer to us. 
houses go for sale. There's a town home right there for sale. It won't work. But anyway, I was looking to see what kind of access went down to that lake. That's all. all right. I was starting to walk around. I went to the park, walk down, look at the lake. When I was leaving, where did the park at? I don't know the name of the street. But it wasn't right there where you were at. It was by the lake. That lake is goes behind those houses. You know, you understand how difficult the situation this is for everyone involved, including yourself. Really? Okay. Yes, I understand. And irregardless of what you know, our feelings are towards each other and that kind of stuff, I, I think we've always got along. I think we've always been able to speak openly about that. There's just some things that happened last night that just doesn't add up. And you know, Jeff, you know, as a former investigator yourself, that there are things that we know, okay, such as the way that uh, uh, you met up with David. You know, you, you freaked him out. You freaked him out. Um, why would you be? Why would you be in between two houses looking at because looking I, at houses? I couldn't keep going straight. There's a drainage thing that goes down the lake. I couldn't keep walking, so I walked up. The dog started barking. Oh hell! So I walked up between the houses and go to the road. All right. He comes around. I thought maybe it was the homeowner. I was like, oh, I don't want to startle. You know, he startled me. So I turned to walk back down. He said, "Stop, please." I was like, "Oh hell, it's gone." I turned around and walked back. Jeff, Jeff, what do you know of being a police officer? That that kind of that kind of thing is not within the norm. We don't, as police officers, we don't walk around at twelve thirty at night in the morning, walking in between the houses. Well, I walked walk between the houses. I was by the lake. The, I couldn't keep going, so I walked up between the houses. That's it. I mean, that is it. I, I, that's it. Yeah. Think about what you're telling me. I am thinking about what I'm telling you. The truth. I went down there. Look, what kind of public access is down there? I walked. I started going to the west side, but there's fences or and I was, oh hell, I come back around the other way. All right. Again, I can't go no further. There's a drainage thing that comes down and fills that like overflow. I guess I don't know whatever it is. So I started. You know, the dog started barking. So I walked up between the houses, go to the road, and yes, to be on the road. So I'm not walking up between. You know, it's just. Whoa, 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 wait, wait a minute. But you weren't on the road until I was going to the road. All right. That's what I was walking up to was go up to the road, walk down to my truck, and drive away. Because okay. I was done looking at the lake. There's no access going down to the lake. So, okay, Jeff. Okay, Jeff. We're past the point of you were there, right? You readily admit that you were there. Yes. In between those two houses. Yes. I, I was just walking from the lake up to the Okay. If you get a call of someone walking in between two houses at 1230 in the morning, I don't know what call brought him out there. Yes, of course. Of course. Okay. I mean, the person who called this in has every right in the world to do this. The fact that Pello is so angry about this is a major red flag. As a police officer, he should know better than most people just how suspicious it is for a person to be creeping around close to homes that late at night. Anyone seeing that would turn it in. And knowing this, it is highly unlikely that he would have accidentally put himself in this position. Correct. I have no idea who called it in. All right. It, what they called in wasn't me. Coming up is a long string of denial and lies. Pello is hoping that his long service record and angry blustering will be enough to influence the department to slide this under the rug. Dave right. said last night somebody knocked on somebody's door. I did knock on anybody's door. I did knock on anybody's door. I did not knock on anybody's door. I don't know what else you're trying to allege here. I don't want to jump to some kind of conclusion. Right. All this isn't about because I was walking, I walked up between that, from that lake up between those two houses. Absolutely. I'm sorry. Absolutely. You know, I, I don't know what else you're talking about. We're talking about, you know, 
standing up with your back to the the house and uh, and trying not to be identified. That's having your back up against the house and not trying to be seen as David walks by. I was walking up. I saw someone coming, so I stopped. I turned to go back. Again, I, the dog's barking. I don't somebody think I was doing something wrong. He said, stop, police. I was like, oh, hell. So I turned around and walked up to him. I wasn't standing with my back against no house. Well, I, I think you're minimizing all of I'm not minimizing anything. He said, stop, police. I was there a little bit more than that. No, that's what he said. You didn't see the gun yet? Hold on. No. You were not aware that he pulled a gun on you. I did not know he did that. No, I did not. When I turned and walked towards him so we could see who it was, then I wasn't a threat. You know, his hand was at his side. He was like, we talked for for what? We talked for a moment. What did you talk about? He asked me what I was doing. I told him what I was doing. That you were there to look for a house for another one at 12.30 in the morning. I'm interested in houses in that area. There's that lake. I was looking to see what kind of access there is down to that lake. My mother's disabled. I mean, she, she can walk, but she can't walk too far. Well, I didn't see any access down there. I mean, off the coast, I can go down there. But as far as a, a public sidewalk going down there, I didn't see one. I'm going to walk back around and then go to my truck and leave. See, you, you know all the, all the things we say. You've been sitting in this chair before. All I'm saying is that what you need to do is think about just exactly what you're saying. Before you answer, before you, before you jump back with a conclusion, Jeff, you need to think about what you're saying. You need to think about what the scenario was right there. Now, I... You need to be honest with him? Haven't you been? I mean, I, I mean, I think I need to take a step further. Okay, because Delaney, scared to death, scared. To I don't know nothing about the lady. I'm, what I'm telling you, what I'm telling you, I'm, I'm telling you, she was scared to death. She was an absolute basket case. It wasn't for me. What? Yes, you were in between the houses. You were in between the houses. What if this would have happened? I walked up between the houses. Zeman was there. That's the one time I went between the houses. What if this would have happened? Would you be a little bit concerned? But I don't understand what you're saying. The only time I walked between those two houses was when I was walking from the lake and up. And but that's what that's right. where you and that's when I met the Zimmer. That's when where you and Officer Zimmer differ in what you said. But whatever the lady was scared of, it wasn't me. It was you. How could it be? The only time I was between the houses when I walked up and Zima was there, she'd already called. Jeff. Pallo is adamant that the woman didn't see him and that the only time he passed between the houses was when the officer saw him. In reality, he was most likely caught in the middle of making several circuits. Zimmer had already been throughout the whole area. You were the only person there. It was 12.30 in the morning. It was 12.30 in the morning. The only time I walked up between the houses, like those two houses, was when Zimmer came in. Pello falls back on denial. He can't come up with any type of reasonable excuse, so this is all he has. You can almost feel the rage that he is poorly containing. All right. I mean, I walked up between, I walked from the lake between the houses, there's Zimmer. Obviously, I'm not the one who scared the women because that's the only time I was there. But you wanted out of there quick. You didn't, you didn't stop and you, know, you said, I'm here looking. Do you think it, let's just run all the way down the line. He's on a call. I'm not going to stay there and talk to him. You. 
with you, Jeff. Think about it. I mean, it just, it is just right down the line. Right down what line? I mean, he's called out there. All right. There's nobody else out there but you. This lady has someone prowling around her windows. She's a very attractive young lady. It wasn't me. I wasn't prowling around anyone's windows. I wasn't prowling around at all. Again, when the dogs bark, I go, I need to go up by the road, and that's my walk to between the houses. Well, what makes you decide to go look at a house at 1 30, I'm 1230 in the morning? I wasn't looking into houses. I'm interested in a house in an area. I was looking at that lake. That is all. I mean, that's all. I realize I just do anything wrong. I have I just we we as police officers and we as human beings know the the difference between right and wrong. It's yes. it is put in our head from I understand day one. All right. I did not walk between that I Again, the only time I walked between those two houses is when I walked, when I was down on the lake, I can't get my front hand. So I walked up to go up to the road. That's it. And when I walked up there, somebody comes running. All right. What were you wearing last night? A t shirt, shorts, flip flops, and socks. Not flip flops, sandals. Okay. Um, did your t-shirt have any writing on it? I don't remember what my shirt had on it. What color was your shirt? Dark. The lighter shorts. I think they were my black shorts. Okay. Were you carrying anything else with you? No. 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 What were my car keys? Where were they at? My pocket. Jeff, I, I just, I'm all in line. I understand that. And, then, and, and you understand I mean, how difficult this is for, I understand how difficult it is for you and everybody involved. I understand that. I, and, but I didn't do anything wrong, but I'm a realist. I'm a realist. I understand. And I, and I think there's a whole lot more going on here than, than what. And 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 I'm and I'm willing to sit here all day long, day long and, and talk about it. I, I understand. All right. I do. There's something right here that you know, you're a police officer. You know the right from wrong. And I understand. I think you did wrong last night, and you think you did wrong last night, and I need to know why you did wrong. Because there's I didn't do anything wrong. Walking up from that lane towards the road is the right thing to do at that point. I mean, I can't go in for the dog. Okay, so I walked up there. I mean, I mean, if it wasn't for the thing, I just walked around the lake and went right back to where my truck was at. I mean, that is all. I'm not, you know, I'm not minimizing anything. You are minimizing. You know no, I'm not. I'm not minimizing anything. I just. Won't. I mean, I don't know how simple it is. It's not. I, it's, I have, it's not that simple. I didn't have ill intent of any kind. It's that's it. It's not that simple. I mean, that's it. It's not that simple. I mean, she is a young, attractive lady. I don't know who she is. is. Um, and like I said, I, I know, you know, I've seen you. I've seen how you, you take a genuine interest in people. Okay? And I think if you knew what you did to this person, because I'm telling you, she's freaking did not do anything to her. You were there, right? It's as if Bellow thinks that if he continues to deny what both the victim and the other officers say, his version of events will be believed. However, no one is going to buy that he was looking at property after midnight. Were you getting money there? Were you, did I walk up from the lake between the houses doing the road? Yes, I did. Okay. You were there, right? Yes. Yes, I was there. Okay. You were confronted by Officer Z. Yes. Yes, he was there. I was walking up. Okay. Okay. Let, 
Let's just go with this in chronological order. First of all, is there any reason that you can tell me why David Zeman would lie about this situation? Because I'll tell you what, he's freaked out too. Because you're one of his mentors. All right. You're one of his mentors. He is, I don't know how I freaked him out. You don't know how he freaked him out. Well, I mean, he couldn't even hardly talk. He was so upset by the situation. He talked about how you were, you know, one of his mentors. You were right. an FTO uh, training sergeant. Right. And I mean, he looked up to you. All right, I understand that. All right. And okay, so getting back to the. The officer on the scene is struggling with the situation. Palo has mentored him, and it is unbelievable that he could be capable of committing such a crime. Still, that bond wasn't enough to inspire a cover-up, which is a credit to the younger policeman. Palo is dismissive of the damage he has done to someone that has trusted him, which is consistent with the selfish nature of acts that he has committed. The question, is there any reason why David Zimmer would lie about what happened? Just, let's just I have no idea. I, I don't want to No, why would he lie? Absolutely. Right. Why would he lie? I have no idea. Absolutely. He has no reason to lie. All right. As a matter of fact, he called off the second unit after he confronted you. Why did he lie? I don't have any reason to lie. Yeah. You know, everybody has their battles, and, and everybody has their crosses to bear. Right. I understand. All right. And you. You're, you know where we're getting at on all these guys. No, I don't. You don't know what you're doing. I'm talking about a, a, a young, very attractive female. I don't know who you're talking about. All right. She's the lady in one of those two houses. All right. I don't know. All right. I have no idea who's in lives in either one of those houses. All right. I wasn't interested in those houses. I'm, I'm sure you had no idea who they were. All right. I wasn't interested in those houses. Right. You weren't interested in lake access. Right. Come, come on, Jeff. Right. I mean, yes. I mean, that's a, that is just a, it doesn't make sense to anyone. All right. It well, doesn't make sense. Again, does it? Yes, it makes sense to me because that's what I went there to do. Right. If I'm going to look at a lake access, I mean, I'm going to do it at 1230. All right, poor choice of times, but that's why I did it. All right, I just walked down there. All right, you're, you're what are you, 17 years? Yeah, 17 years of being a police officer. I understand. And, and, and you don't think that that is a, a severe error in judgment to be all right in between two houses at 12 30 in the morning you just, all i was doing was walking from the lake to the road all right you're implying that i'm doing something mysterious between these houses and all i'm doing is walking from the lake up to the road i said I, that's exactly what i'm implying Jeff. that's it that's all because doing. officer zamer who has who you agree to says has no reason to lie about this says that you were up against the house, and he had, and he had to, he had to call for you three different times. No, he didn't call three different times. And then you turned around and walked the other way. Okay. When I saw the figure standing, standing on that, I was like, ah, I just turned and walked back. All right. What did he? Okay. What did he say to you then? When you were turned around and he walked back, what did he say to you then? Stop, please. And what else was he saying to you? Stop, please. Let me see your hands. I don't recall everything he said. I just said, stop, please. I, I realized, oh, yes, please. So I turned on that back. Right. I mean, I, if I realized at first he was, he was, he was Officer Zemer, I'd have just kept walking right towards him. Right. But my initial thought was, it was someone that lived there. I said, oh, right. That's it. You know it's not good. You know, That's it. It's not good. That's it. Because the scenario doesn't fit. 
You know it's standardizing effect. That's it. The constant repetition isn't making Pello more believable. Quite the opposite, in fact, especially when coupled with the way that he smacks his legs and flails like a child having a tantrum. And you're kind of also, yes, but I think you've seen me interview enough people that I just want to know what the lines is. No, I something, yeah. something went wrong. All right. Something's wrong. I understand. You think something's wrong. Well, I, I'm convinced. You might tell me something's wrong. Just Whatever scared that woman was not me. All right. The only time I walk into the house is when I encounter Officer Zimmer. That's it. Pello continues his futile denial, but the detective isn't swayed. To a trained investigator that knows the suspect, each protest is a confirmation of guilt. All right. I wasn't there before that at any other time. Whatever scared her, whatever it was, all right, or whoever it was, was not me. I would, did not do it. I was not the one that was up there. All right. I walked up between those houses, and boom, there was Zimmer. But I don't understand. You do understand because I understand. It is you're, you're, you're sitting there trying. Learning. You're sitting there trying to say I've done something wrong. I mean, you're saying that. I'm telling you, I didn't do anything wrong. I I wasn't there doing anything with ill intent. Whatever started it was not me. It wasn't me. Well, uh, okay. Let me just entertain you. But it wasn't. Let me just entertain you for a second, Jeff. Who was it? I don't know. I have no idea who it was. At 12.30 in the morning, who was it? I don't know. I do not know. No one else has been up here telling us, hey, I went by that house at 12.30 last night, except for Jeff Pilo. And Jeff Pilo says himself, you know, I was there. Yes, I was there. All right. And Officer Zemer tells him, paints a different picture. I am the handsome lady at number nine. She paints another picture. I mean, think about it. All right. This is a, this is the only time I went up between those houses when I walked from the way, looking at stuff. All right, looking for the. Did you stop? Did I stop where? In between the houses. I don't understand what you're asking. When I walked from the way and walked up and, and met Officer Zimmer. Did I stop between the houses? Prior to seeing the officers in did you stop between the houses? No. I stopped when I saw the figure at the front of the house. It turned out it was him. I stopped, turned, walked away. That's when he yelled, stop police. I was like, oh, just okay. So what you're saying is that you were walking between the two houses towards Officer Zimmer, you saw him, you turned around and he said stop police. Yes. That, that's that's the totality. Yes. That's the totality. That's the amount of time I was between those two houses. Okay. And let's go back to how Officer Zemer, what reason would he have to tell us something that wasn't true? But why would he tell us a different story of what happened in between those houses? I have no idea. Well, we've already we've already established that he has no reason to lie about it. Right. right? We have no reason. I, You've done this long enough, you're smart enough. I don't understand. You know exactly where we're sitting here. Right. And there are things that you need to do, and there are things that you need to take responsibility for and get these things done. You've let me tell you, Jeff, let me tell you point blank. You've heard two people in the last 12 hours. And you've heard them deeply. In David Zeber and this female. Yes. I did not hurt that female. All right. I did I don't even know anything about that female. I wasn't the right time. The only time I went between those two houses is when I went below the golden road to go to go look for them. But that's not what David was saying. All right. I don't know what his perception of the situation was. He, he has, did I pause and turn to go away? Yes. Did I realize if I realized at first that it was a police officer, I wouldn't even pause that. He kept on walking. Period. All right. I wasn't doing anything wrong. I had nothing to hide. If I realized it was a police officer, anyone, Zimmer, anybody, I'd have just kept on walking when he broke stride. 
I thought it was someone that lived there. I was like, oops. I mean, I, the dog was barking. You thought it was someone who lived there, so you were going to try to get away from the person who was living there? What? Yeah, Elo can't reasonably explain why he tried to get away. When the detective points out the weak points of his statement, Fellow gets upset and falls back on blustering. Look, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just telling you things in your right. well, that makes obvious. Obvious. sense. Obviously, it doesn't make sense. I, I'm just being real with you, Jeff. I understand. I don't know what else to tell you. I wasn't doing anything wrong. I had. I did not. The only time I went between those houses is when I walked up and met Officer Zener. I did not do anything to anybody anywhere last night. Period. All right, I don't know what you're trying to allege here. I did not do anything to anybody at any point in time. All right, I'm not looking in some woman's windows. I'm not doing any of that. I walked down by that way. When that's what you said a minute ago. That you were looking. You said somebody was walking around looking in this woman's hat windows. It was not me. Whoever it was, I have no goddamn clue. I don't, oh, God, then we went away. I don't know that I said uh, you know, I don't know how else to say it, all right? All right, the truth is the truth. I've already told it to you, and that's that. I don't know what else to do. Excuse me for getting pissed off here, but I didn't do anything wrong, all right? I did not do anything wrong, period. I don't know how else to put it. I don't know how else to do it. I, I don't. I don't. Well, as... As it's happened in the past, you know that. And, and I'll just tell you, I, I'll tell you point blank. I don't think the story is exactly the way you're telling it. I don't. Know I don't know what Dave Senior told you. All right, I. I don't know what his perception of it was. But the only time well, his, I, his perception is right on, Jeff. His perception is right on. Exactly right on. Again, I and. and and, here, and here's the real story of it all, Joe. You're the one who has to answer for it, not David Zimmer. David Zimmer was on patrol. Answer. I'm not alleging he did anything wrong. All right. right. I'm not. Again, I don't know what his perception of it was. I didn't do anything wrong. And I had no ill intent. I did was walk through that lake and up between those houses. All right. You know, now that I'm sitting in an interview room and accused of being a criminal, obviously I should have turned and walked back 50 feet and walked up onto the, uh, the cold is right now. Yeah, cold is right there. Obviously, you should have done what again? Should have walked all the way back to where there's no houses and I walked up to the cold is Obviously, that's what, you know, looking back on it, perhaps that's what I should have done. I, I, oh my God. Is that how you came around? Huh? Is that how you came around? Did they empty lunch? To see the, the spillway? There's no spillway there. No, no, Whatever you call that. At the end of the cul de sac. Right. Is that the way you went around? Originally, I started to come down off of whatever, I can't remember what the street is. You come down, right? I didn't want it, so I walked up on the street, whatever that street's called. Uh, I can't remember the name of the street. Andy, Andy Port. Walked down to where that cul-de-sac is, looked at that townhouse, did not, I didn't go up to the windows of the townhouse, I looked at it from a distance to see if two-story where it was, if that's the one that was for sale, it was, I walked down by the lake, started to go on the west side, it's like, no, nah, I don't want to go that way, so I started to come around on the east side, walked around, that's where the little spillway thing comes down there, I don't know what you mean by spillway now. I realized, okay, I, I can't cross that, that's my turn, and walked up between the houses. Well, actually, I went down a little ways, realized that, went back. You know, one house had a fence, I believe. So I walked back. I guess it was one house, walked up between the houses, and that's why I met Officer Zimmer. Where, where, where were you driving last night? My pickup truck. To take a minute to think about it and get a thought in your mind. Because if you take a minute and you think about it, and you put all I don't have to think about it. You put that's all, what happened. You put all the things together, uh, Jeff. That happened. All right. Again, yeah. and you come up to a conclusion. How it may seem right, is not, it's just a coincidence. 
It's yes. just a coincidence. I didn't do anything wrong last night. I didn't do anything to anyone. Again. He didn't do anything to anyone. Pello places an interesting amount of stress on the fact that he didn't do anything wrong last night, almost as if he's subconsciously implying that he has done something wrong in the past. He is also trying to use a fragment of truth to make himself believable. But the fact is that he didn't do anything to the woman because he was stopped before he had the chance. I didn't do any one thing to anyone. Pello is sounding like a broken record at this point. Clearly, he has never devised a cover story in case this type of situation occurred. He arrogantly assumed that his usual methods were foolproof, but given his occupation, he should have known that wouldn't last forever. Did anybody ever say you did anything? You said I terrorized two people. Yeah, yeah. I didn't do anything. anything. All right, let me back up again and talk to him and listen. Well, no real things in the real scenarios, Jeff. If this is happening to your wife, would you say that you didn't do any that that person didn't do anything to your wife? I didn't do anything to anyone. I don't know what happened. What didn't happen last night? No, I, you're, you're asking me to make a you're asking me to make a comparison, and I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about as far as what happened to that woman. I not a part of it. I don't know anything about it. I don't know anything about it. I, obviously, if somebody was terrorizing my wife, I'd want to do something about it. I was terrorizing no one. I didn't do anything to anyone. Well, let me let me ask your definition of terrorizing somebody. Me well, walking from that lake and walking up between those houses. And meeting Officer Zimmer is not terrorizing someone. Okay, I'll, I'll right. give you that. I didn't. I'll give you I, that. That's the extent of what I did. Well, then, by the way, if if that's what happened, I'll give you that. No, it's not if that's what happened. Well, but we have others who say otherwise. Two others. Two others, Jeff. I mean, this is something you're gonna have to. You can't just explain what. I can't explain. The, I didn't do anything. Let's go back to the, you define what terrorizing is. Terrorizing if someone's looking in your window, is that terrorizing? I wasn't looking in anyone's window. Right? I wasn't. Right? Did you see anybody else out there? No. I wasn't looking for anyone else. Right. But I mean at, at twelve in the morning you wouldn't have been that was somebody been, else out there. Yes, yeah. it didn't down where I was at, yes. Right. If they're up on the road or up between houses where I'm not at, I don't know. I wouldn't have seen them. I, I, I think we're I think we're getting mixed up on. Oh, but yeah, there was somebody else there. When I first pulled over, some woman walking her dog. Right on the street up. I don't know the street up. Right, but you know. <laughs> I think we're getting two different. Ideas of what terrorizing somebody is. You keep on saying, I didn't do anything to that woman. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't do anything to anyone. Okay. I'm not saying that this person was, you know, someone broke into her house or anything like that. All right. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that she was physically attacked or anything like that. I'm glad for her. I'm glad nothing like that happened. Right. However, but for a young female, Having someone looking in her windows or trying her doors is, a, a, but I didn't do anything like that. All right, I didn't do anything like that. Jeff. All right, I wouldn't. Jeff. I wouldn't do anything like that. Jeff. Jeff. I simply looked at that lane, walked it between those houses. All right, if the spillway wouldn't have been there, I'd have walked around and. Right again, I. <clears throat> I did not do anything to anyone. I didn't do anything to anyone. I know, that's what you're saying. That's what happened. I, it's not what I'm saying, that's what happened. I didn't do anything to anyone. But that's not what two other people say. Right. What do the other two people say? Right. Well, A, I remember. Okay. His sequence of events is a lot different than your sequence of events. A lot different. 
Right. And I'm to the point, uh, let me reiterate, that you just flipped him out. Because I don't, I don't know how I flipped him out, but I mean, he was flipped out. Yeah. He, he said you weren't yourself. I wasn't my star. I wouldn't be myself either if, if a police officer confronted me at 12 30 in the morning between two houses. And then we can't discount what the way he says. You know, her dog is barking its head off. Right? Yeah. Uh, down by the way, yep, the dog's barking his head off. Mm -hmm. And right. well, any dog's barking, I don't know where it was at. Okay. Both the victim and the officer have very different stories compared to Palo. A good part of the reason that Palo wasn't acting like himself was due to the fact that once he was recognized, everything was over. He knew exactly what position he was in and how suspicious he looked. There was a very slim chance that he might have gotten away with being spotted there randomly with no one making a complaint. But this whole scenario is nothing short of damning. I don't know what house the dog was at. It was just dog barking. And why does she have any reason to call down here and say, hey, this is what's happening in my house. Not once, but twice. And also calls her brother. But again, I don't know who was messing with the lady. It was not me. All right. Obviously, if somebody's messing with her in whatever fashion it was, I don't know. Of course she should call. Okay, but we've already established there was nobody else there. That you kept. Never mind. I did not... You did not establish that you didn't terrorize anybody, as you put it. I didn't do anything. Right? Obviously, my mistake was, again, like I said, I walked between those houses to go to the road as opposed to going farther down. I mean, that's it. I know and you know it's more. There's not, no, there's, there's not, not more than that. That's all. I did not do anything else. I there did not do anything else. I did not do anything to anyone. I, you know, what specifically happened? I don't know. I did not. What specific the time I walked between those houses was. I, I apologize. I don't mean it. You know, yes, it, I'm not going to apologize for being angry. I've been accused of doing something I had nothing to do with. Right. You know, we're at the point where you know you you have got to be thinking that this isn't some fishing expedition. We just didn't pick you out of the clear blue sky to come in here. All right. Correct. Obviously. Again, the only thing I did. Walk from the lake in between two houses out to up to the road. Out to off the road. The road. Uh, and when I realized somebody was up there, I was like, and turned to go back, and that's what he said. And mm -hmm. I turned around and came back to him. Okay. But we're leaving out this. We're leaving out you. We're standing up against the wall like this. That did not occur. And an officer that did not occur. you twice. That did not occur. And then you no, turning no, no, and no. walking away. Did I turn? Your hands right here. And he no. says, stop. Show me your hands. And he has, and I mean, you've been in the ERU. I understand. You have been in, you're a weapons guy. You're a former military. I understand. And you're telling me you didn't know somebody had a gun pointed at you? He's backlit. I wasn't paying attention to that. You weren't right. paying attention to something. He said, stop. I said, oops, it's the play. I turned and walked up there. That's that. I talked with him a few minutes, and not even a few minutes. All right? You know, he's obviously on a call. There's problems here, Jeff. There's, there's all kinds of problems. And I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not here to sit here and tell you that it's all rosy and all that kind of stuff. But no. And you know where I'm coming from because I've told you. I am not buying what you're telling me. For one second, for one second, you know 
Well, I've done this for a long time, and you've done, done it for yes, I am. You've done it for a long time, and I and I know, I know, I know. You, I know. and you know what. How many times have we sat in here and listened to somebody for hours and did not do something well, they did? I'm not going to be here for hours and then, telling you that I didn't do anything wrong. And then, you know, and have all the behaviors and all the things that are happening. You know, you were not Sergeant Hilo last night. You were absolutely somebody else. And we can sit here, and you can say, this is what I did, and I can sit here and say, this is what we know, till the cows come home. But you know, you know, in your heart, exactly what happened. Yes. Yes. I went down, went to that lake, walked between those houses, go back to the road, put on my truck, and that's what happened. That was the only time I was between those houses. Palo is still going strong with his lie and shows no sign of breaking down. This is the type of person who, even if caught in the act, will never be able to admit to any wrongdoing. Well, Leslie, does she know you were going? I don't know. She was asleep when I left. I was studying for the test we were taking today. I couldn't sleep. Shaved. I couldn't sleep. You know what? Went for a little drive while I was driving it. I went back to look at that lake. I told you why I was there. That was it. That was it. You know, so you've been looking for a house for your mom and We've discussed it several times. Have you looked at any other homes for your mom and I've looked at some of where I live at, yes. They're all overpriced or they're shitty. All right, or they're not, they're not uh, ranches. I'd love the community further down from there, the one that takes care of it, very same style of houses. All right, but again, the little expensive thing they make in the in downs. No, not in downs. Farther down the street, down the street. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't remember the name of it. Down Stride, I can't remember the name of it. Is it community there? That well, not community little. Oh, yeah, right. it's, it's, yeah, it's got the little building. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's got the little shacks for about $135,000 and not worth that. But in this town, they're all, that's about the lowest you get. Unless I put the mother on the west side of town, I'm not doing that. And you say she's in Gribble now? Yes. I'm going for a for her. She's looked, I've looked. And say, Oh, yeah, that would be totally normal for Jeff to do. Just to go at 12 30 in the morning and walk in. I can't predict you what she's going to say. You've been married to her. She's the, she's the mother of your children. I understand. I cannot predict you what she's going to say. You don't think that she knows you? Yeah, she does. Is she going to say that that would be normal behavior for you to do? It's not. Is it normal that I do that? No. All right. Is it? We. I don't know how else to say it. I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't. I. And at some point, at some point, you've got a wife and I understand two children. Though. Again, three children. I didn't do anything to anyone. Right. Where the lady was, I didn't do anything to her. Right. I wouldn't do anything to anybody. Right. Be different lives. Be probably different lives. Again, I don't know what you're implying there. Right. But I'm, but Jeff, I'm not implying. I'm saying it. Right. I'm sorry. I, I, don't, I don't lead a sinister life of some kind. I didn't do anything wrong. Wow. I, I didn't I didn't do anything to anyone. I don't I didn't do anything to anyone. I didn't I did not I did not I did not I don't I did not I I, I just don't think you're using good common sense right now. 
Honestly, what well, did you house last night? What common sense was it? I, did I have ill intent in my heart when I walked between those two houses? No. I, I had no ill intent in my heart at all last night or any other. Oh, all right, let me ask you. Right. Let me ask you this. All right, let's, let's look at another scenario. Let me, let me. This night is going to another scenario. What happened last night is what happened. I did not do anything wrong. I did not do anything to anyone. And Jeff, I'm convinced right. that that is not exactly what happened. Okay. I've seen this lady. Okay, like I said, let me give you a different scenario. I've seen this lady. She's extremely attractive. I haven't seen her. I have no idea who she is. As you're walking through the two houses, do you see anybody in the window? I'm not looking in the windows. I didn't see anybody. I'm not saying you're looking in the windows. At this point, I'm not saying you're looking in the windows. I wasn't even walking next to The house I was walking next to didn't even have windows on that side. Jeff. Okay. I know. Remember, I know the answers to my questions. I understand. All right. All right. How far apart are these houses? I don't, I didn't measure them. I don't know. They're not very far. Your standard house, they're closer than your standard house. Yes, right. unless you go on the old side of town where they're really close to each other. The house I was walking next to didn't even have windows on that side of the house. All right. The house over there had windows. I didn't. A good question to ask would be why. If he was merely passing by to look at other property, he was paying enough attention to the victim's house to notice whether it had windows or not. Officers who were trying to pin him and get him to drop his weapon. Jordan didn't give up without a struggle and ended up shooting both Officer James Rowe and James. Right next to those windows, I walked over here. I'm not glaring or looking at anybody's windows. I walked in the way and I was walking up to the road. That's that. But that's not that's not bad. Although Palo will continue to lie through the rest of the interview, this is the last long burst. The tone of voice he uses is to try to shake the detective, as if he is foolish for not believing Palo. It just shows how weak his story is when the detective won't even pretend to believe him. You know, you're sitting here trying to convince me I did something wrong, and I didn't. I didn't do anything wrong, Mary. Here is the I did not do anything wrong. I understand. All right, here's the bottom line. I didn't do anything wrong. That's the bottom line. That's not the bottom line. All right. I didn't do anything to anyone. Period. I didn't. I mean, you, you have to understand. I understand. Now, this is a bad situation. A very bad situation. Right? I walked in the lane between the two houses going up the road. All right. Again. If it wasn't up in the spillway, I wouldn't even walk between those two houses. I would walk further down and walk up. At some point in time, I'm sure I would walk between the two houses somewhere to get up from that lake. Alright? But again, when I walk between those two houses, it's I, I'm not doing it to look in any way. I'm not doing it to do anything other than get through a road. Period. I don't know how. Did not do anything wrong. I just, you know, in this situation, Jeff, you're bought and paid for. Bought and paid for? Right. I didn't do anything wrong. You know. You're just too much. Too much? Too much. Because, because everyone else has no Ulterior motives or ulterior means or anything like that. Neither to say something that isn't true. Neither do I. This, this gal would have just assumed if Jeff Gillard had ever come into her life, I wasn't in the, that day. I, see, I, I don't even know if that happened to us. I can't even tell you which house she was in. All right? I don't know what car he went to. I didn't ask him in the car. He came to your car. And you know that whoever that lady called on was not me. I did not go between those houses prior to the time I walked from the lake it up. Alright. Whoever, whatever she's saying, it was not me. Alright, I have no idea what her allegation is. I have no idea what she's saying, but it was not me. Alright. It wasn't me. 
That's what I know that's what you're saying. Right? I know that's what you're saying. It was not me. I did. But even when even we signed, the two people that we end up saying, and one of them being your own, you're even telling me. No, it was her. Did you? I didn't see anybody else. I'm not going to sit here and nitpick everything. I didn't see anybody else. I absolutely didn't nitpick. I didn't see anybody else. Again, I. You've heard of this before. But I'm going to tell you. Because I know from the amount of interviews I've done, from the amount of interviews you've done, that. And there's no doubt in my mind. There's a hole burning through your chest. I didn't do anything wrong. I, know. I mean, you can sit here and say whatever you want. I did not do anything wrong. But then your perception, you may, you may think that you did anything wrong. It's not a matter of my perception. It's a matter of reality. I didn't do anything wrong. Whoever was terrorizing that woman, I have no clue who it is. All right, it's not me. I don't know. I don't. Uh, the only damn time I walked between those houses, uh, Jeff, was the time I walked up there. You got a lot of explaining to do. I've explained. I don't have a lot of explaining to do. Yes, you have explained it. You have a lot of explaining to do, and and I keep on going back to this because I have to go back to this because you know what it's like. To be sitting in this chair, I understand. Okay, all right. And I know there are times that people are literally telling you the truth, and a good interview will figure that out. All right. I don't know. I'm not. I'm telling you the truth. I didn't do anything wrong. I had. I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't do anything wrong. But. Palo insults the detective by implying that a good investigator would realize he was telling the truth. It's a petty, desperate move designed to draw attention away from the holes in Palo's story. You also know, right, that a good interview would sit here and know when someone's not telling you the truth. So yes, you're right. All right. And Jeff, you're correct. You're correct. I'm sorry. All right. And your perception of me right now is I'm not telling the truth. Not just because not just because you're sitting here telling me that you didn't do it. It's because we've got a whole host of other things that says you did. And that's what you're dealing with. Uh -huh. I didn't do anything wrong. And you don't understand do anything to anyone. Period. I don't know. I didn't do anything to anyone. Period. Period. I didn't do anything to anyone. And you're you're gonna have it. You know that the best places to clear things up are right here. Yes, you're right. There's nothing to clear up. There's nothing to clear up. I mean, I, I, there's nothing to clear up. I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't do anything to anyone at any time. And that's the story we're up to. It's not the story, it's the truth. Because that's all we're going to say. If, if it comes to a point where we have to go to a judge, you're going to say, I didn't do it. Tell the judge the same thing I've told you. The only time I walked the female sounds and I walked from that way up towards the road. That's it. That's it. I... You're not. You're, you're just not listening to reality. You're just not listening. Your only, the only thing you can say is, hey, is I walked from the lake between the houses to the officer and I didn't do it. However, I had the police officer, I had the victim, I had the admittedly in the area. I, I mean, it just. It's not looking good for Jeff Pirro. I did not do anything to anyone. And this is just a case of mistaken identity. I didn't do anything to be 
I didn't do anything to anyone. Hang on, that's what he said. Tell us that you and I know better. And we always use these lines, those cliches, like the young one is true, I did not do anything to anyone, that your guts are just screaming at you. No, they're not, because I didn't do anything wrong, I didn't do anything to anyone. Period. I didn't do anything to anyone. Anything to drink The detective has an edge in this case because he knows Palo personally, and that, coupled with his training, makes it painfully easy to see that his colleague is lying. Not only that, but he is able to read that interviewing Palo any further is a lost cause. Need to go back again. In June 2008, a jury convicted Jeffrey Palo of 35 counts that included 26 counts of aggravated sexual assault. A judge sentenced him to 440 years in prison in August that same year. At his sentencing, the judge said, you literally went from a protector of our community to a plague on our community. It is necessary to impose a sentence that will ensure that the defendant will never again be free. The sentence was later reduced to 375 years, and throughout his trial and sentencing, Palo maintained his innocence. Thank you for watching. Check out my Patreon link in the description below and drop a like on this video. Also, don't forget to leave a comment. I'm always curious to read what you thought of the case.